I was actually asked a very good question, and I was asked to look at this waveform, okay? So I'm going to ask you guys the same thing. If you guys look at this waveform, pay attention to the top part of the waveform and the bottom part of this waveform. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to kind of take a look at it, and then you guys give me your feedback in the comments of what you think these two waveforms are, because this is something that I'm going to be working on. So I want to see if you guys can give me some feedback on it. So take a look at that top waveform and then take a look at that bottom waveform. And then you guys let me know what you guys think might be wrong with it or what steps or what procedures I should follow to diagnose this particular issue. Hopefully uh, this information comes good to you guys and helps you guys out in the shop. Um, I want you guys to take this information and be able to grab it, learn it, and apply it in the actual shop. I was actually asked a very good question, and I was asked to look at this waveform, okay? So I'm going to ask you guys the same thing. If you guys look at this waveform, pay attention to the top part of the waveform and the bottom part of this waveform. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to kind of take a look at it. And then you guys give me your feedback in the comments of what you think these two waveforms are. Because this is something that I'm going to be working on. So I want to see if you guys can give me some feedback on it. So take a look at that top waveform. And then take a look at that bottom waveform. And then you guys let me know what you guys think might be wrong with it. Or what steps or what procedures I should follow to diagnose this particular issue. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds. For those of you guys that are live, you can put in the comments. If you're not live, um, let me know. <clears throat> I think you got somebody. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is this is the crazy part. If you guys, none of you guys shouted it out, here's what it is. At the top part, okay, that's actually a human heart contracting and moving blood through the human body. On the bottom part is the blood oxidation level of a human being. So if you got medical doctors that are using oscilloscope to diagnose humans, what is your excuse for not using it on diagnosing a car? Okay. What most technicians tell me is that it's too complicated. It takes too long to set up. Great. So tell me how much faster it is for you to swap four coils and four injectors instead of setting up a scope. Okay. So most of the time, everybody's excuse is it takes too long to set up, all right? You guys are going to start learning throughout this class how easy it is to set up a scope. Number two, a lot of people say, well, it takes too long to boot up. Well, when you walk in every morning, you turn on the coffee pot and the air compressor, number three should be turning on your oscilloscope. Make sure your oscilloscope's charged up and ready to roll. So this way, when you guys need it, it's already ready to rock and roll. It's not like you got to boot it up and let it warm up. As automotive technicians, we're the biggest group that likes to see things and do things. This is why YouTube is such a great tool, okay? Because we have a question. Instead of reading an article, we'll just go on YouTube and watch a video, right? So that video is showing us, and then we take what we learned from seeing it, and we put it into application, okay? This is why an oscilloscope is a really good tool for technicians because we are visual kinesthetic learners. We got to see it and then do it, all right? So now let me share with you guys why you don't wanna use a voltmeter. So using a DVOM, it gives you an average reading, right? So if I look at a voltmeter and I put it across a sensor, the reading I'm getting is an average. It's not an actual reading, okay? So this is why DVOMs can take you for a loop, okay? Number two, a DVOM can only capture 360 samples a second. And then, not too bad, right? Okay, and a DVOM won't show you a picture. It just gives you a digital readout. So now let's take a look at the difference between a scope. So an oscilloscope will display a true reading and it can produce up to 400 million samples per second. So which one gives you more samples, right? 
So your scope is giving you 400 million samples a second versus 360 samples a second. And this is from Fluke. This is the $800 Fluke, Fluke 88. Fluke 88 gives you 360 samples a second, right? And we're talking about the shit. That's the best freaking voltmeter out there, but it can't outdo a Pico 4425. So Pico is going to give you 400 million samples a second. And when we're talking about samples, it doesn't mean that it's going to be testing that circuit. It's talking about dot representation. So let me show you guys what I'm referring to in that. Here's what I did. I plugged in my scope to a camshaft position sensor. That's what you guys are seeing here on the left. And on the right-hand side, I put a back probe and I put my voltmeter to that same crankshaft or camshaft position sensor. You guys see a difference, right? My voltmeter says that it's 2.54 volts. However, if I look at my lab scope, my lab scope is almost at 12 volts. And it's a pull-up circuit, right? Okay, so this right here, what is this telling me? That my voltmeter, this is switching so fast, my voltmeter is only able to average out 2.5 volts. It's not even half of what the real voltage reading is. The real voltage on this is 12 volts. So half of that would be six, okay? And this is on a car that's at idle. So right there, what you can see is that your voltmeter is too slow, okay? It's a great tool to check for potential, right? That's about it. And then after that, best thing to use is a scope, okay? All right, so when we're looking at an oscilloscope, Okay, it doesn't matter whether you're using a Pico, an Autel, a Mike Sig, right? Um, they're all the same. And what I mean by that is the way they're set up. If you give me a actual oscilloscope from a laboratory, I'll be able to use it. You guys will be able to do the same, okay? Why? Because they're all the same. When you're talking about an oscilloscope, anything that's in the vertical region, V for vertical is also V for what? Voltage. So anything that goes up and down is a voltage reading. Anything that goes across is going to be a time reading, okay? So vertical voltage. I always use memorization by association. If I can associate the V from voltage as the same with V with vertical, what is that going to do? It's going to help me pick it up quick, right? So anything I see going up is going to be voltage. Anything I see going across is time, okay? This, this screen you're looking at right here, this is from a uh, Autel MP408, okay? And this is a 10 by 10 screen. This one right here is from a Snap-on, okay? If you're a Snap-on user, all right, this is what you're looking at, okay? It's the same thing, voltage, time, okay? This is from a Pico, right? So we have these little squares. You guys know what these squares are called? Okay, those squares are called graticules. So every graticule builds a 10 by 10 square, 10 by 10 frame, okay? So I have 10 up and 10 across. The only one that's different so far is the mic sig. Mic sig does 10 up. 14 across, okay? <clears throat> so this is important for us to know because if we can look at my screen right here on this Pico, I'm at five milliseconds per division. So that means for every one of these squares, that's five milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 15 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds. If you don't believe me, zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right? And so on. So this would mean that if I'm at five milliseconds per division, my whole screen is 50 milliseconds, okay? On my voltage setting, this one is at plus or minus 20 volts. So that means it's going to be how many volts per division? If it's 10 up, it's two volts, right? So if I have a reading here, from here to here, right here we're seeing four because it goes all the way down to negative 20, but it's going to go up, okay? So when you guys are dealing with snap-on, right? If we look at snap-on here, it says 20 milliseconds. 
What Snap-on does is the measurement they give you is for the whole screen, okay? Unlike with this one, where this measurement means here, here, and here, with Snap-on, it's the whole screen, okay? So that's one of the big differences between Snap-on and other scopes is that Snap-on does entire screen, okay? So you just got to get used to it. <clears throat> okay. How many of you guys have heard of Trigger before? Oh, well, they has. Okay. So Trigger. Uh, with all the shit going on in the world, we're not really going to get into firearms, but on a firearm, how does a gun fire a bullet? What do you need to do? got to pull the trigger, right? I've never seen one shoot itself, but hey, <clears throat> okay. Like a trigger on a gun, the trigger setting on your oscilloscope is telling the scope where to start recording on your particular screen. It also tells the scope what voltage and time change it needs to see before it starts recording, okay? So on this one, you guys see this gold little diamond right here? That gold diamond is my trigger, okay? And then if I look down here, my trigger is set up to channel A, and it's set up for what's called a rising edge, and it needs to go above zero volts. So what I told the scope is, is I need to see voltage go over a zero volts. Once it goes over, it's going to start recording everything before and everything after, okay? Now, the reason why we want to use a trigger is a trigger is going to help us set up our one capture on that screen, okay? If you don't set up a trigger, what happens is that waveform you see is going to be all over the place, okay? I've seen people connect scopes and they're looking at a picture and then it just disappears and then it reappears and then it disappears. Then it appears over here. Then it disappears and appears halfway here, then halfway there. What the scope's doing is it's on auto mode. So the scope's trying to put a picture there. It just doesn't know where you want it, right? Okay. So whenever you set up your trigger, okay, you're telling the scope where you want the scope to start recording. Okay. So depending on the type of scope, Pico, Autel, you grab a little a little dot, drop it there, and then that's how it knows. With the mic sig, uh, it has a little uh, wheel on the side, and then you're going to drag that up and down, and then that's going to set your trigger. So we're going to test the camshaft real quick. So first thing first on this one, just looking at the, the whole screen here again, anything vertical is going to be voltage. Anything across is going to be time. So right now, the way I have it set up is it's five milliseconds per division, so it's giving you 50 milliseconds for the whole screen. If we're doing a camshaft signal, usually you want to start with about one second. So if you want to click on that down arrow right there and then change it to one second. So that'll be on this bottom part right here. Okay, we'll go one second. And then it's at 100 millivolts. Um, we know that this is either going to be a 12 volt or a 5 volt sensor. So let's start with 12 volts. So you're going to do plus or minus 20 volts. Okay, perfect. So then now... We're going to go ahead and, and make our connection. So what you want to do with the connection is, oops, we're going to back probe it. So best way is, what's that? Pretty cool. This is, this is my new diet cart, actually. I just built it. <laughs> yeah, so we're testing it out. Ah, oh, no. I got my Snap-on guy back there. All right. So you're going to take that one for ease. Usually when you're dealing with a three-wire sensor, the, the middle one's usually going to be your signal. So if you want to go ahead and back probe that signal for me, that middle one, and just along the wire all the way down till it can't go any further. All right. And then we'll throw this one on here, and we're going to ground that to the battery. Okay. And then you're going to take this one, and you're going to pop it on channel A. <clears throat> So it'd be the first one all the way to the left. So the B and C, you're going to slide it in and then twist that black part. To lock it in place. Perfect. Okay. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and start the car up real quick so we can test it out. Area clear. clear. Okay. Perfect. So now, as you can see, we have a good waveform. Okay. So if you want to jump over the lead real quick, so this way we can take a look at it. So one of the major reasons why I made you go such a long time is this is going to help us. If, if we have a missing tooth, we'll be able to see it, right? Okay, so I don't see any major dropouts. So what we're going to do here is let's turn on a trigger. 
Okay, so like we were talking earlier, trigger is telling the scope where you want it to start recording, and it's gonna record before and after, right? So on Pico, you're gonna click right here where it says none, and then you're gonna set that to channel A, or excuse me, repeat. Okay, so because it's on repeat, we're telling the scope that we want it to keep repeating at that same level, okay? So right now, channel A is set to a rising edge, so it needs to see voltage go up above zero. So what you could do is you can either change the voltage here in that little box at the bottom, or you could grab that diamond and move it wherever you want. So you could do either or. So now you're telling the scope that it needs to go above 3.7 volts in order for it to start recording, okay? So now let's go ahead and reduce the time. Go ahead and set it to about 200 milliseconds. So hit that, not that one, the one on top. There you go. Click on that one and set it to 200 ms. Right there. Beautiful. We can actually reduce it further. So if you want to go ahead and put it like about 50 milliseconds. Okay. So now we're able to see the waveform a little bit more clear, right? A little bit more defined. Okay. So if I move this trigger, put it up here for me, put it like around 16 volts and drop it. Ah, still too high. Go a little bit higher. Right there. So notice how your scope stopped. And if you could see right here, it still says running on the bottom left-hand corner. So the scope is actually still wanting to record. The problem is, is we set a trigger so high that it's not reaching the, tr the threshold. So the scope's like, I'm not gonna record anything, okay? So that, that's one of the beautiful things about using an actual trigger is that the trigger is actually gonna be able to clean that up for us, okay? <clears throat> so now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna set this up. Since we're already on the cam, we can set the crank up and we can do a cam crank correlation, which is a common thing that we need to do as techs, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another lead and we already have a Pierce probe over there. So you can plug into that yellow Pierce probe. Yeah, and then this one I'm gonna ground, double stack on the ground right over here. Okay, and then I'll set this one up over here for you. All right, so if you wanna go ahead and set up channel two, channel B for me. You wanna grab the camera, Jose, and then show the connection. You're going to have to move the laptop with it, though. <clears throat> you don't want to use auto. Uh, we know that it's going to be plus or minus 20, so we want to go there. Okay. And then bring the trigger down, so that way it'll start triggering off of it. Put it into the channel somewhere in here. Right there. That's fine. And then go ahead and click on, like, the 12.0 over there and drag it down. That way we can separate them. Bring that down. All right, so right now, Jose is showing you guys that we're using a Pierce probe at the PCM. That Pierce probe we put in there because this is a lab car. If you guys ever use a Pierce probe, you need to make sure that you guys are using something like this. You guys better be using electric liquid electric tape after you guys remove the Pierce probe or use an enamel-based um, nail polish. So this way you guys can plug up those holes, okay? So if you guys are using Pierce probes, you gotta make sure you're using this. <clears throat> All right, so let's bring it down more so that way they're separated, completely separate from one another. Yeah, bring that down, further down. Right there is fine. All right, cool. So the top one is gonna be our camshaft, right? And if we hit the space bar on Pico, it stops the screen. So if you notice, we got one, three, four, and two. You remember the firing order on a four cylinder? So all four, most four cylinders are one, three, four, two, right? So we can see the firing order just with the camshaft with it, within itself. Okay, so on the bottom, we have the crankshaft. Okay, so how do we know if that's in sync? We need a known good waveform, right? <laughs> 